Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my newest series. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this one is creating a full stack application with the MERN stack. In this uh, introduction video, we're going to be going over all the different parts that we'll be using in this series. So if you've built with the, with uh, MERN before, you can feel free to skip ahead to the next video. And without further ado, let's just get into some slides. Alright, so the M in MERN stands for MongoDB, and what MongoDB is is a NoSQL data store, uh, and it uses JSON-like documents with uh, optional schemas in our backend to fetch the documents, and it's great for scalable applications, and uh, this, it's simple syntax for JavaScript developers since it's uh, essentially JSON. And the way that we're going to be accessing MongoDB is by using a MongoDB Atlas cluster and the Mongoose Express middleware. And uh, I've listed the doc reference down here. So the E in MERN stands for ExpressJS, which is a minimalist backend framework for Node.js. It's used by Fox Sports, PayPal, Uber, and IBM. And what it allows us to essentially do is create our own API uh, from which we will fetch in our client-side React application. So if you've seen my other React tutorials, you've seen us use arbitrary uh, NHL data and JSON placeholder data. And basically what that was was an API that we were fetching from. And in this, we're going to be creating our own API with Express. And uh, Express can be used without a front-end framework, but uh, I wanted to do sort of like a full a full course uh, as opposed to sort of snippets that I've been doing in my, in my re uh, videos up to this point. So I've got also the doc reference uh, listed here. So the R is going to be uh, React.js, which is a library for building user interfaces. Uh, it's component-based in, in the HTML sense, meaning you essentially are creating custom HTML elements and then rendering them in a layout uh, and by using a virtual DOM, which is uh, known as JSX or JavaScript XML. And this is basically the, the React um, syntax that we'll be seeing later as we go into this. Uh, so can this also, much like uh, Express can be used without a front-end framework, this can be used without a back-end framework, but uh, combining them the two together just gives you more, uh, more sort of freedom as an administrator. Uh, it's used by Facebook, Netflix, Dropbox, Cloudflare, and Reddit, and I've got the docs there. And the, no, uh, the N in MERN is Node.js, which is a JavaScript runtime environment for executing code outside of the web browser. It's written in C and C++, and this will uh, build our front end and our back end. So for this course, you'll need Node.js installed, which we'll be using. We'll be using tools almost entirely from this, uh, this CLI, and we will also need a text editor. You can use anything from Notepad++ to Atom, but I recommend VS Code, and that is what I'll be using in this course. So once we're inside VS Code, we're going to want to create two folders for this project. Uh, the first one is going to be called server, and the second one is going to, oh, not inside of that, second one is going to be called client, and so client is where we're going to install our React application, and server is where we're going to make our API endpoints with Express. So if we go into a terminal here, and we do cd client, the first command that we're going to want to run is npm, or npx create react app and we're going to put a period there. Okay so once your react is done installing we're going to go back out of the client folder and we're going to cd into the server folder and what we're going to do in here is npm init dash y and that's going to default yes on all the questions then we're going to do npm i express cores and mongoose uh, those will be the three things that we need for this first lesson so once we hit that that'll install and once that's done, we're going to navigate into the server folder here. We're going to create a new file. We're going to call this index.js. And inside of index, we're going to make our uh, requirement declaration. So we're going to do const express equals, oh, did not mean to press that, require express. And we're going to do const mongoose equals require mongoose. We're going to do const cores equals require cores. And uh, we get these from the package.json, so these dependencies right here is where we're allowed, or uh, what makes us able to put these up here. And then we're going to do a uh, const API equals, and we're going to call the express function on that. And then we're going to do uh, API.listen, and we'll do port 5000 for now. We'll do, oh, not 500, 5000. We're going to do a callback function where we uh, console.log uh, API listening. We're going to close this off, and then we're going to do uh, api.get, and we're going to do a slash here. We're going to do request response. We're going to arrow function here. 
And then this is uh, basically just going to be our default route. So what we're going to do here is res send. We're going to write successful route. Or we could do endpoint. I guess we'll do endpoint. It's not technically a, an entire route. Successful endpoint. Well, it is technically a route, but anyway. All right, so after we have that, we're going to just test this real quick. We're going to do node index, and then we're going to pull that up in the browser. We see the console message API listening. And once we see this in our browser, localhost 5000, we see successful endpoint. Okay, so after that's done, what we're going to do here is we're going to open a, a new terminal right here just so that this stays up. We're going to navigate into the client folder, so cd client. And then uh, once we're in there, we're actually going to just change this up first. I just wanted to get ready to serve it. So we're going to delete these files here just because we won't be needing them for this. And then we're going to delete the imports and references. So we do that, we go to app, delete this logo, delete this, and inside of here what we're going to do is we're going to actually put an H1, and we're going to put a ternary operator in there from an object. We'll get to that in a second though. First thing we're going to do actually <laughs> is uh, we're going to declare a state. So data1 we're going to call it, and we're going to do set data1 equals react use state, and we're going to set it to null at first, or uh, by default. We're just going to call a fetch method here. We're going to do HTTP slash uh, colon slash HTTP not uh, s, slash slash local host 5000, which is the server that we just started. And then we're going to chain a promise to this res.json. We're going to put that through the JSON function. Then data is going to be equal to set data1 data. And then inside of here, what we're going to do is if there's a data one, we're going to return data one. Otherwise, we're going to return loading dot dot dot. So now we're just going to npm start that and then open in our browser. And in our browser, we're going to see an error. And this is because uh, of the, we didn't Im implement cores into our, and we'll see that actually here blocked by the cores policy. And that's the reason that we actually installed, uh, oops, wrong index. That's the reason that we installed the uh, cores module here, is if we do api.use cores, and we call that function, this error will uh, go away. So let's go back to our original. We're going to restart our API here, back into here, and we're just going to refresh this. So the issue here is that I have, I did send as plain text. I should have done uh, res.json. So now we're going to restart this once more. And then we're, we're going to restart our React uh, app for good measure as well. And then we're going to see what this looks like. And we can see in our browser, we got the response and painted it into the React uh, virtual DOM. So this is it for the introduction video into this series. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, leave a like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one.